Hey folks, how are you? Welcome to my kitchen in 2020. I'm super excited. I'm taking part in this Jarred Up January Collaborative and tonight you get to can with me a berry jam. I'm pretty excited about it because the berry jam recipe that I'm going to be using comes from this so easy to preserve book from the Cooperative Extension of the University of Georgia. It's got recipes for like everything in it. Um, this is a classic but it has the recipe here on page 207 for berry jams. It says blackberry, blueberry, boysenberry, dewberry, gooseberry, loganberry, raspberry, and youngberry. There's a whole bunch of berries. Um, it's pretty simple recipe. Two ingredients. You got berries. You got sugar. That's it. This is not low sugar, but it's super easy. But what I'm going to be using are huckleberries. And huckleberries can be used in place of blueberries. And we get huckleberries here all over the place. In fact, I have a whole bunch of the bushes along our property line that are huckleberries. And what they are is, I guess in other parts of the country, they're bigger, but these are just wee little like blueberries. So we can use those. Um, the recipe, first of all, I'm going to be doing this tonight in the steam canner. So I'm going to bring the steam canner over before we get started and show you a little bit about it. I'm going to toss these in with the with the berries. I'll be right back. Let me get my steam canner so I can show you a little bit about it. I think I've done something with the steam canner before, but a steam canner is a little bit different than a boiling water canner. However, for a long time, they weren't an approved method, but they have in the last, I don't know, maybe two or three years, um, you can find recipes for them and they're, they're approved. So this one is a super cool one. And here it is, it's two parts. Instead of being a big pot filled with water and the jars being submerged, the point is to get the jars to the proper temperature, which would be the boiling water temperature. These steam is that hot. Actually, I believe steam can be hotter, but, um, but this canner has a little reservoir at the bottom. I'll show you, see the different sizes, this little bit down here. I'm gonna take the top off so that you can see. And I have my jars in there and they're hot because they have been sterilized so I'm not going to touch them but you can see down here under the jars there's like a little platform the jars sit on and there's water that goes under there and then you place your jars in the in the um, canner and because this recipe is processed for less than 10 minutes, you have to pre-sterilize your jars. Now, the beauty of doing a recipe that's over 10 minutes is that in that 10-minute processing, your jars get, get uh, sterilized. But so what I did was I put the jars in there. You bring, when you're using a steam canner, you bring it up to a boil, and you'll see there's usually a little hole that steam will come out. And you don't want it to be where it's boiling so hard that the lid will go bloop and steam will come out. And then it'll sit there and it'll shake for a minute and then it'll go bloop and steam will come out. When it gets to where steam is sputtering around the edges, you actually wanna turn it down a little bit so that it kinda of brings that boil down. It'll maintain the temperature, but then the steam will just release from this little hole. This brand is called the Victoro, Victorio brand. And it has a little gauge at the top. And this little gauge has the different altitudes. The blue, the blue bar on the outside is from zero to 3,000 feet. This, the orange one is from 3,000 to 6,000 feet. And the yellow one is 6,000 feet to 8,000 feet or zone three. And you can see that there's a green bar. The darkest green is for the people who are at my altitude, which is zero to 3,000 feet. The lighter green is for the zone two, which is the three to 6,000 feet. And the lightest green is for the six to 8,000 feet or zone three. And the point is when you put this on and you get it steaming, you will watch the gauge on here get to the green for your altitude. So I have to wait for it to get to the darkest green. And then I know it's reached the appropriate temperature. Now I've pre-sterilized these jars, but they've been sitting a little bit so they're not as hot. So I'm gonna go ahead while I'm preparing everything and get it back up to hot. The water I can tell in there is still hot, but I'm just gonna get those jars back up to where they're hotter and then we can go from there. So this recipe is gonna require nine cups of crushed berries and six cups of sugar. It says to sterilize your canning jars. Then we're gonna combine the berries and sugar 
in the pot and then slowly bring it to a boil, stirring occasionally until the sugar dissolves. And you're su it's surprising when you actually do that, how much liquid comes out of the berries. It, it gets really liquid um, when, as the sugar dissolves. But then you're gonna cook it rapidly to or almost to the jellying point and uh, depending on whether you want a firm or soft jam as desired. So the jellying point, if you stick your spoon in your jam, it will sheet. And um, if you put your finger, run your finger through that, you'll see a line. Now, if it just runs back together, some people will put that on a plate, let it cool for a second, run their finger through it. And then if the liquid just runs back together, it's too liquid. If it stays separate and kind of oozes back together, it's kind of getting at the jellying point. If it just stays separate, then it's at a hard jelly. So you can just kind of test it and see where you're at. And then, uh, so as the mixture gets thicker, you just keep stirring it frequently to prevent it from sticking. And then when you get it to the consistency that you like, so it's not like solid, I mean, it's not gonna be solid, but it's gonna be a thicker thing. It's not liquid like a soup, but it'll be a thicker um, jelly. Then, and basically somebody told me one time, if you get it to the consistency that it's like a warmed up jelly, then it will firm up to be a good a good consistency in the jelly and we'll take a look at that but then we're going to pour it into those hot jars leave a quarter of an inch head space of course we're going to right wipe the rim of the jar and then put the um the lid on and tighten it down with one of the rings and then we're going to put it in the pressure or in the steam canner and now you can use a steam canner in place of a boiling water canner you just do everything exactly the same so if something, whatever it says, however long it says to do it in a steam canner, then you do it. So there's my nine cups of crushed, well, no, they're not crushed yet, The of the huckleberry. So I'm going to use this handy dandy, it's like a, a potato masher. And because these are so small, I don't really have to crush the heck out of them. We just want to kind of get them a little broken up so that the liquid starts working with that sugar. And honestly, as this boils, these things will, um, they'll pop open too. So I'm gonna keep working on that. So you can see now already, see how much liquid is coming out? I don't know if you can see that down there, all that liquid. Yeah, so we've already worked a little bit of that and I kind of had them a little bit of crushed up before we started. So with these little ones, the reason I'm not a fan of them is because they taste really good. They're, fin they're fantastic. Don't, don't, um, you know, that, that's great. It's just that they get little tiny stems. Each one of those little berries has a little stem and you have to get them off. So that can take a little bit of work. All right, now I've got my little, my famous little ladle and I'm going to put in the six cups of sugar. There we are. See that? So I'm going to put that sugar in there. Let me tilt you down a little bit. See if you can see. Oh, that's better. And now I'm just going to mix it up. And I'm going to go over and put this on the burner and keep mixing it until it comes to a boil or almost to a boil, I think. It says to cook rapidly too. Um, or almost to the jellying point. So I'm going to go over here and put this on the burner and turn it kind of on a medium heat until it gets to the right consistency for me. So I'm gonna pause you here, and I will go over to the stove and put this on there, and I'll bring you back once it's got to a little bit of a boil. Okay guys, I wanted to get a book because I wanted to explain the jellying process better because this jam that I'm making does not have pectin, so it's one of the jellies that's made, or jams that's made without pectin. But I wanted to say, I got to thinking about talking about the steam canner and I said something about the steam is hotter than the boiling water and that's not true. I was thinking in my head about pressure canning. Steam is hotter in a pressure canner which is why you use the pressure canner for certain foods. But for boiling water foods or, or um, high acid foods like fruits and things like that, you can do it in a, in a steam canner because the steam is the same temperature as the boiling water. So sorry, I just wanted to correct myself on that because I don't want to give out bad information. So I'm stirring, I'll bring this over. I'll let you see where we're at. See how that is getting really a little bit, lot more liquid. And as those uh, berries pop, 
more juice will be let out, so it'll become even more juicy. So good. And then, the other thing I was going to tell you is, for checking for the jellying of how firm it is, some people, I said, will put it on a plate and then tilt it and see how it runs on the plate. Sometimes you can just stick a spoon in it and then run your finger across the back of the spoon. And if your finger mark stays there, um, you can tell by how well it stays there, how firm the jelly is. So, but generally, uh, jams are done with crushed fruit or jellies. Yeah, jams are done with crushed fruit and things. So you might get little bits of fruit and things in there, but... Um, it should just sheet over the back of the spoon, run your finger through it, and the mark that where your finger is should should stay relatively well. And then you can tell how firm your jelly is or your jam is. So I'm going to continue to let this go until it gets to the consistency that I would like. And then I will let you, um, we'll be back. Okay, I want to show you guys how I am sterilizing the jars. You can see that the, the little uh, steam canner, it's not, the lid is not bubbling up from this edge. It's not popping up. But you can see the little gauge right there. And you can see how my area is showing. I want to make sure you can see. Yeah, you can see the little green line. And you can see the arrow, the, um, the little gauge is right there in the dark green. I hope you can see that because I can't. There you go. I'm trying to hold my phone like I'm usually filming it. So anyway, there's that. That's getting those jars back up to heat. And here I am working on this jelly. So see how it's getting real liquid? Now we got to continue to cook that until it boils and it starts to get thicker because you can see See, it still needs to get a lot thicker than that. So, I'll be back to you when that's done. Alrighty, it's been, I'm going to say about 25 minutes or so, and this has sat there, and, you know, I didn't have it at that heavy-duty, heavy boil. Um, when you use pectin is when it will call for it to get to a, to a, a really heavy-duty boil, but when you're using... Um, a no pectin recipe usually it's just to boil it until it gets to the consistency that you want and you can kind of tell when it starts looking like the berries aren't quite individual balls and it's kind of a translucent looking color it always reminds me of when you make gravy and it's that milky color or that pow you know it's like that flour in it and then all of a sudden it kind of becomes clear so it's kind of when it does that and you can see in there See how it, see how it is? It's just kind of, um, it's just a little bit loose. And you know what? Even if this doesn't set up super firm, it then is like blueberry syrup. So you know what's really fantastic with this? I'm going to throw this in here right now. This stuff, even when it's not set up, it's actually better when it's not set up for this. But if you make like one of those lemon cakes, a yellow cake mix kind of cakes that you can just get a box, or if you're really talented, you can make it from scratch, and then just drizzle this across the top of it. Oh my gosh, it's so good. Yeah, it's just terrific. So um, there's that. But anyway, <laughs> and another reason why I like the steam canner is because there's not that much water in it. It's not that heavy. And I can bring it right over here where I'm working and take jars out of it. See, it's sitting there. I can take jars out of it and put them in there as I want. In fact, I'll show you what that looks like. I like to be able to do that instead of carrying the hot jar with the liquid. This isn't that heavy. I can, I can easily pick it up. And you can see the jars in there are hot and ready to use. And I just am a real fan of the steam canner now. Now that it's approved, because you know me, I won't do something that's not approved. So, here we go. Now, I've got my handy-dandy little protect my hand glove on because these jars are going to be hot. And I will use my little lifter and bring one of these jars right over here. And I will, another thing I like about the steam canner is if you don't have enough to fill the whole canner, you don't have to put spacer jars in there because these aren't going to clank around like they would if, um, you know, if they were in a, boiling water can or how the water makes them kind of jiggle around it won't do that so that's pretty awesome 
All right, so remember, I need to fill this up to about a quarter of an inch head space. I can do that. Try and look from the side. A little more, a little more, a wee bit more. That looks good. Okay. And then I'm going to use a tissue, or a paper towel, and I'm going to wet it. This is just the hot water that I put the, uh, the lids in. And if you have questions about that, I have a lot of videos on that stuff. So here I'm going to wipe the rim. Always, always do this because if a little bit of that berry got up in there, it could cause the seal to fail, and that's not going to be fun. So then we're going to put that on there. Boom. Put a little ring on the top. And if you are putting it on by hand, you want to bring it to where it just stops and just it's just a smidge like you can feel the tension happen I like to use this cool tool it's from ball it's kind of like a it's a little jar lid setter and you just tweak it and it's always worked for me so there I am I'm gonna go ahead and finish the rest of the jars and I'll bring you back when um, when I'm finished and we set them on the stove to start to can Alrighty, so the recipe said it would make eight half pints, and it made exactly that, and that was with the nine cups of berries and six cups of sugar, exactly eight half pints. Now I've taken, this is so nice, I can lift this very easily and carry it from the counter over to my stove and set it on the burner, and now I'm going to turn the burner on. Now these are super boil burners, which is what they call a super boil burner, and it gets really hot really fast. Um, I bought this stove specifically to can on it because it had the super boil burner, but that's not what I want to do with this. I want to let it gradually come up to a boil, put the lid on, and then I've got the handle here, but I don't want the little, the little vent hole to be right there where the handle is, so I'm going to turn it back a little bit, but I also don't want it to just blast into a cabinet or um, my stove front because it's got the you know the computerized front and you, I don't think it's good for that I don't know it might not be but anyway so I'm gonna wait for the steam to come out of there I'm gonna wait for the little gauge see how it's climbing and the blue is my line because I am at I'm actually at 301 feet in my kitchen 301 feet I did a little alt altometer alt thing on I don't know it was one of those GPS things and I checked my altitude and I'm at 301 feet in my kitchen so I know that I have to use the blue, and then when it gets to this dark green is when I'll start timing it for five minutes. So after that is done, then you turn the heat off, you let it sit for about five minutes, kind of, you know, settle in there, and then we'll take it out of the canner, the steam canner, and we'll see, oh, see, steam is already coming out of my little vent. So I don't know if you can really see it, but I think you might be able to... See, oh, you can see it kind of, it's not hot, hot, but you can see it coming out. So it's building up its steam, but I'll wait for this to get to where it needs to be, and I'll be back in a minute. All right, see, I have reached the green bar for my altitude, and I'm going to hold this dark, you can see the steam coming out. So that means the inside of this steam canner is filled with steam that is the same temperature as a boiling water canner would be. And so now I know that I can start a timer for five minutes and I'm gonna do that. And so I'll be back in 10 minutes because in five minutes I'll turn the heat off and then I'll let it set five minutes. And then, oh, I wanted to show you. There was a wee bit left and I wanted to show you. It has already gelled. You can see that this is gonna set up just perfect. And that's pretty yummy stuff. So I'll be back in a few minutes. Alrighty, they are out of the steam canner. All I did was open it up. Well, I let it set for five minutes and I opened it up and I brought them over here onto the uh, thing where I always let my canning, you know, cool. And they've already popped. Several of them have already popped. As soon as I took the top off, they started popping, which is really awesome. But anyway, this is the second of the three canning videos that I will be doing for the Jarred Up January group. And it's just a fun collaborative. And so there will be in links, um, information about where you can go and watch other people canning. Um, and you know, 
some of their channels do all kinds of different cooking and things so it's fun but my next recipe will be the harvest time apple relish and it is done with apples and serrano peppers and cinnamon and spices and it's just going to be fantastic so that video will come up i believe on the 24th and um so i hope you enjoyed this i hope you Take some time this year in 2020 to do some fun canning and creative things in the kitchen. And I uh, look forward to doing some more videos for you. Thanks so much for watching.